So when you, you, you think you think it didn't affect things to have Twitter do that? You don't think it doesn't affect things? Let me have Google refused to deliver Republican fundraising emails. Let me focus you on where we are now, because I heard you making the case. Well, you're the, that, you're the that, one who wanted to go back to the past. I'm happy to debate you about, about the nature of the 2020 campaign. I'm not debating you. I'm trying to figure out what you think and why. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, then at some point you've seen my running list of Democrat state media rules. And over the last few days, with the release of the Twitter files, two of those rules have definitely been proven true. The only legitimate scandal is one that involves the Democrats' political opponents, and the only legitimate election interference is against Democrats. Now that brings us to old Newt Gingrich, and I do mean old. I cannot believe this guy is still doing this stuff. The old straight white conservative did an interview on NPR for some reason, where the host picked a fight that she immediately regrets. And I promise we're gonna get right into that, but first just give me 30 seconds to tell you about this new free coin offer from Noble Gold. 2022 has shown us what might be coming. So if you're sick of everything being so expensive and the threat of recession hanging over our head constantly, it's time to take action. A precious metal IRA uses tax advantaged gold and silver to keep inflation at bay and give you protection from financial nightmares. And you'll get a stunning free three ounce silver American virtue coin when you open a qualifying IRA account this month. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments. So call 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. And remember, there is always a risk of loss and past performance is not in indicative of future results. Newt Gingrich, former Republican Speaker of the House, and he joins us now. Speaker Gingrich, welcome. Good to be with you. Um, but that has been what he has wanted to talk about. I mean, his repeated false claims about a stolen election, which I have to note you supported uh, and talked about and spread, that, that yeah. seemed to fall flat with midterm voters. Is How big a problem is that for Republicans? Look, I'll be cheerful about coming back sometime, and we can devote an entire interview to whether it was a rigged election, not necessarily stolen, but certainly rigged. And we can start with all the Twitter information, and we can start with Zuckerberg's $415 million. I just need to pause Democrats. you there because it's not me saying this. This is dozens of courts across the U.S. that have that have rejected claims of rigged elections. No, no, they rejected claims of stolen elections. Nobody ever looked at rigging. For the record, do you believe Joe Biden was legitimately elected president? For the record, I believe that he won under the terms that was set up. And I think that the entire elite system cheated in every way they could to defeat Donald Trump. I need to push you on this before we go on. I'm not hearing you say you believe he was legitimately elected. I believe he won under the rules. And I think that the system that elected him did everything it could to rig the game, including, for example, Twitter kicking off the incumbent president of the United States, kicking off the New York Post. I just did a podcast about this. Mm -hmm. uh, that we're releasing with a New York Post reporter who, can, Miranda Devine, who can walk you through step by step. So uh, when you, you think you think it didn't affect things to have Twitter do that, you don't think it doesn't affect things. Let me have Google refuse to deliver Republican fundraising emails. Let me focus you on where we are now, because I heard you making the case. Well, you're the, you're the that, one who wanted to go back to the past. I'm happy to debate you about, about the nature of the 2020 campaign. I'm not debating you. I'm trying to figure out what you think and why. And <laughs> I love how the NPR host tries to remove herself from the debate that she started. She purposely steers the conversation into the 2020 election and stolen election claims and keeps pushing back after Newt tries to reframe it as election rigging. That's debating. And I think that Newt was legitimate in calling it election rigging because given everything that we're seeing in these Twitter files and given everything else else that we know that happened even before the 2020 election involving all these same parties during the 2016 election. So there's a lot of reason to be suspicious at this point. You can't expect the guy to remember everything, but Newt should have also brought up the fact that NPR's public editor, Kelly McBride, tweeted out a post asking, quote, why haven't you seen any stories from NPR about the New York Post Hunter Biden story? She then attached an image showing a letter from Terrence Samuel, NPR's managing editor for news, 
arrogantly stating, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories, and we don't want to waste the listeners and readers' times on stories that are just pure distractions. But, as it turns out, the actual distraction was Terrence Samuel and NPR. As we're seeing here, the media and NPR all played a part in election interference, so of course they're going to obfuscate and downplay. We're seeing that play out now in the media and on Twitter from Democrat politicians insisting it's all a big stupid nothing burger. It's pretty obvious to me anyway that these hollow protests are literally because they have no other response. They are caught again. I say again because they've already publicly bragged in Time Magazine about doing these things. Now we have solid proof and confirmation that the government was indeed involved in the form of regular FBI meetings with Twitter trust and safety head Yoel Roth, who by the way had no qualifications for that position outside of being a rabid Trump and Republican hater. And just a side note, we now know that Fauci's daughter worked for Twitter, John Podesta's niece worked for Twitter's trust and safety team, former FBI general counsel James Baker was Twitter's deputy legal counsel, and former CIA and FBI operative Jeff Carlton was head of Twitter's strategic response team. So don't tell me the government wasn't involved in this. What do you expect the media to do now? They blindly repeated the reassurances of Twitter executives that none of this was happening when it clearly was and also being done in service of the Democrats. The president called you out for shadow banning. What is the truth around that idea? So I, I think a lot of the, in, the the statements behind the statement, the question behind the question is, um, look, shadow banning is a very widely defined term. There's not one single definition. But the real question behind the question is, are we doing something according to political ideology or viewpoints and we are not you lie the premise of this whole hearing uh and the reason that twitter somehow with all the other social media platforms out there got the singular honor to sit in front of this committee uh is because there's some implication that that your site is is trying to censor conservative voices on your platform so this was never targeted at conservative Republicans, uh, since you've been singled out as a social media platform before this committee, uh, Twitter undertook no behavior to selectively censor conservative Republicans or conservative voices on your platform. Is that correct? Correct. Good. So let the record reflect that because that's the whole reason supposedly we're here. Because House Leader Kevin McCarthy wrote our chairman a letter and said, hey, this is going on and we think your committee should investigate it. And it's a load of crap. It's false. This has been widely and debunked. The president, by the way, has tweeted about this idea of shadow right. banning, saying it's not good. We're going to look into this discriminatory illegal practice. He's tweeting about other tech companies just this morning as well. But as you point out, Twitter's like, dude, not so much. Oh my God. They, yes, I mean, this has been debunked by Twitter. They say that this is not something that they actually actively engage in. We got you. This is a giant scandal. The government, Democrats, the media, and big tech all interfered in the election in favor of Joe Biden. No doubt telling themselves that it was okay when they did it because they were doing it for good reasons. Anyway, I'm gonna dig more into the Twitter files and a live stream more today, which may have already happened. So when you're done here, go there and check that out. But before you do that, please hit that like button and leave a comment. Thanks a lot.